Hi guys, welcome back to A Bookish Weekend. My name is Brooke and today we're going to be doing my review and book talk for No, I Can't Even. So, No, I Can't Even is written by Simon James Green and the only reason I picked this up is because I got a promotional bookmark in my favorite box and then I saw what Simon James Green was going to be at Yelk and I was like well this book seems fun it seems entertaining um I might as well just give it a go because then I can maybe try and get this signed when I get to Yelk at the end of this month um and as you might be able to see from the sticky notes I ended up loving this book I loved it so so much I gave it five out of five stars I would give it more if I could sadly I can't but this book was just amazing. So the way I'm going to do this video is I'm going to do the spoiler free review first and then I'll let you know when that's finished and then I'm going to go into a spoiler filled book talk. So for those of you that have read this book can um, hear my full depth thoughts about it and we can discuss it in a bit more detail. So this book follows Noah and he's not very cool. He's kind of a loser, kind of a nerd and his peers at his school pick on him a lot. Is a little bit, a lot, socially awkward and such a lovable character. He is so relatable at times. He is just so funny and so unique of a um, wire character that I haven't read before. So I really enjoyed that. So this book is set in the UK and he is in, Noah is in year 11. And this book starts with his peers finding out about his mum's embarrassing Beyonce tribute act. She can't dance, she can't sing, and she's 40 years old and he doesn't think that she should be wearing a leotard at that age. That starts another series of bullying and teasing and being picked on. He just wants to be cool, he's tired of it, his dad left him when six years ago and he has no idea what happened, he has no idea if he's still alive, he just went missing. That caused some events that caused him to get picked on and so the way he thinks that he can become popular is if he kisses the girls, this girl called Sophie. And Sophie is just the, the best girl in the year in Noah's eyes. But when Sophie invites him to a party, he takes his best friend Harry along with him and that night Harry kisses him, his best friend Harry kisses him and they get caught and it just makes everything go into utter chaos because this is Harry coming out to Noah and telling him that he has feelings for him but Noah believes he's straight, he thinks he's 100% straight and that he couldn't possibly ever want to date Harry so it causes some friendship issues and then it causes onto a bunch of events that lead to Noah trying to get over this get over everyone thinking that Harry and Noah are together but also Noah trying to get over that and get popular. So as I said I really enjoyed this book, it was so funny, the writing style was so unique, it was like a 16 year old boy talking to you about it. For example, I just, I just turned a page to have an example here and I'll just read you a little quick summary, it doesn't really have any spoilers but it just says maybe things okay would be after all and I trip to see a trip to London to see the mousetrap would be wait a minute how did Mr Baxter know how much you liked Agatha Christie? That's in that last bit so in capital letters um just here and that's just like how it's written it's very unique as to how Noah thinks and stuff the I would have liked more of the relationship between Harry and Noah and here because that was the main reason I picked this up but I know there is a sequel to this and I'm hoping we get a bit more of that in the next one but this is a really great coming of age novel, it's so funny. It's utterly ridiculous and over the top, but not in a bad way. Like, I mean that 100% positively. Noah's character development was amazing. So that's it for the spoiler free book review bit. I just really want to get into my more in-depth thoughts about this book. So if you haven't read this book yet, I recommend that you click off and come back once you have read it. And I do recommend that you read it because this book was so great. I have been struggling a lot with enjoying books, they've been disappointing me a lot. So I've been giving a lot of books that I thought would be four or five stars, two or three stars, which is really upsetting for me, but this book was a nice, really good surprise. So yeah, make sure you go pick it up and come back and watch the rest of this video when you have read it. So now on the spoilery, spoilery thoughts. I'm going to talk about the relationship Noah has with this guy because I was reading it and I was laughing out loud and then I would be like crying because the relationship he has with his grand is just so pure and so lovable and then obviously his grand has dementia and it was just how much he wanted like his normal grand back like to give advice and have proper 
because you can see she was very much a parental figure in the absence of his mother and his father and he just wanted his grand back to be there for him again but obviously he would have these moments of recognition within her but then like that should be gone and she'd just be out out of it and very confused and it was just heartbreaking to read um so yeah but i did really appreciate that it gave a lot more depth to the story i think than just like being a funny coming of age story let's see what we have on the sticky notes but this is probably the funnest book i've ever read because i don't normally laugh at books um i don't really laugh at tv shows or much i'm a bit sad like that but this one I was laughing and smiling and just cracking up about it because it was so funny. Like, the first one I have, I just wrote lol on the post-it note. Like, just how they would say, how you know, I'd always be like, bow chicka wow wow instead of just saying they like sex. Um, and stuff like that. And just those sort of, like, little bits just made it so real and representative of, like, a 15-year-old boy who's very awkward about that sort of thing and she doesn't like talking about it and it was just so funny and so nice to read I loved it so, okay, so the trope, um, fence lovers if done correctly, I absolutely love most of the time I don't like it there's a fly most of the time I don't like it because I don't believe it's done very well but this time it was done amazingly and it is one of my favourite tropes if it is done well um, and this one did so great. I loved it so much. Um, Harry and Noah's friendship and relationship was just amazing. They have these rules that they have to follow by, and that was just so adorable. Like, tell they're like bestest friends you could ever want. Um, so when they were like having their issues, it was so heartbreaking because I just wanted them to, you know, reunite and just be happy again and love each other again. Um, and, um, I wrote, I got a post that says, and I've written at me, because it's going on about, um, um Jess has really annoyed him, he's, he's going on about how he would happily chuck his pencil at her, oh wait, no, he would happily snap his pencil for her, but that's really expensive stationery, and he's not willing to sacrifice that for her, and I'm there like, me, I love stationery, like, don't sacrifice your pencil, dude, you keep that pencil, you deserve to keep the pencil, she's not worth it, you know, I just, ugh. I'm probably just rambling on and making no sense, but like, if you've read this book, you will understand that it's just too pure and cute and funny and ridiculous and lovable. That it just... It's, my emotions are coming out right now. Um, and he's so over the top and dramatic. It's like when he's saying um, about when they're getting paired up in class and he hasn't got a partner, he's like... At the end of that chapter, he's like, and Then the clouds parted, angels sang, a blinding light shone down as the earth quaked, and a million cherubs shot arrows of bliss into the joyful air and the miracle to end all miracles occurred. Like, that's so dramatic and over the top, but it's something I would totally react to. Um, I would totally react like that, because I am also very dramatic. And so, if something amazing, it's not that amazing, but if something good like that did happen, I'd be like, oh hell the lord, he has come, I finally, you know, thank you for loving me, I will never doubt your presence again, like, this is it. God is real. Life, I've peaked. This is the best moment ever. That sort of thing. And to just find that amazing, it was so funny. And just any of his dramatics, because he was dramatic all the way through this book, and like, it's relatable, it's realistic to what teenagers are like. And Noah was so innocent. What did I write? I I've got a post in that here, and I said, I love in Noah's innocence so much. So let's just see what section that's about. Oh my god, when he's going on about Harry having Calvin Klein boxes, like, Harry's changed, he's now suddenly going to have sexual activities with people, when did he change, what's happened to him, and that sort of thing, and I'm just there, like, <laughs> yeah, I just loved it, like, I would act like that, um, it was just so funny, so cute, and I just, I just loved it, and when he said, um, <laughs> on chapter 4 here, and he said, Noah's house was a bland estate built from cheap brick in the 80s during an apparent national shortage of architectural imagination. That was just made me laugh so much, um, because it just, okay, this is really nerdy, I'm really into politics, and it just, we talked about the, um, obviously, like, houses being built in the 80s and stuff, and my politics lessons, and it just made me think of that, and it just made me laugh, and I don't know why I found it so funny, but it just made me think. 
about that. So yeah, that probably made no sense, but maybe you you understand. I don't know. Oh my god, and then there was this sentence that again was just so relatable but also so, so heartbreaking that it was just, I wasn't prepared for it and he said, and it always goes, when he's, there's no tea in the house but he's trying to make Sophie a cup of tea and he says, there's Bob full, he said, feeling the tears prick his eyes again, this is how it would always be, he felt powerless against fate and destiny or at least the incompetence of his mother, things would never align for him like they did for other people, he would always be in the wrong place at the wrong time wearing the wrong wearing the wrong clothes, saying the wrong thing. He would always be he would always be the snotty little geek on the edge of the party. Correction, far away from the party, unwanted, joked about. And he did sometimes wonder, was that why his dad left? Was it because he was such a poor excuse of a boy? And honestly, that whole like, is be doing the wrong thing at the wrong time and it would never align for him and he was always the one that got it wrong whereas everyone else was like sailing through life just to hit me. And it was just so emotional and relatable and yeah, I just wasn't expecting it, but it was just so realistic and so true and so just great. I just loved it. Um, so realistic, like this whole book. I feel like that's all I'm saying for this whole book talk, but it was just the whole thing, like, mm, so emotional. Um, I just wrote on a sticky note. I don't like his mum much. And then when he meets his grand, I just put little heartbreak in and a little sad face because that was so sad. Sorry that, um the last comment I make about the humour in this book because I feel like I've talked about it enough and if I continue to mention every point in this book we're going to be here a while and no one wants to hear that but I just put on this one I love four jokes so I'm going to do so I'm going to study psychology at university and I did it at college um I mean everyone can appreciate a good four joke even if you don't study psychology but they just really humour me and so just and um so said he was going to explode all over his mother. No, not that. That sounded like a Freudian nightmare. And I just cracked up at that. Like, ugh. that's just a sort of joke that really, like, gets to me. Like, I don't know why. It's just, this book was 100% my type of humour. And I just really appreciated that because most books aren't. But this one was hit on the nail. <laughs> hit the nail on the head, shall I say. So, and okay, so now I'm going to, um, so now I'm going to talk about the relationship between Harry and Noah because that just made my heart melt. It made my heart melt my heart sing. It just, it was, it was adorable and cute and everything that I wanted. Um, and that's why I wanted more of it because it was hella cute. So this is before they go to the party and he says, um, Harry says, no seriously, it's kind of cute. Um, Harry said, tweaking his bow tie like everyone does when you wear a bow tie. And I just imagined the two boys and Harry just like tweaking Noah's bow tie and it was just being so cute. And I just melted and it was just so fun. Another boy in store. <laughs> My boys, <laughs> just, just accept that you love each other, you know? And then at, um, Noah says, you told me I looked cute, and Harry's like, no, I said your outfit looked cute, it's different. And then Noah goes, wait, you don't think I look cute? And then Harry's like, no, you do, you look really nice. And he puts his hands on Noah's shoulders, and again, that was just a moment where I just melted, because it was so freaking cute. Like, you can just tell the infatuation between him and just like the comfortable, how comfortable they are with each other and it's just adorable and Noah's so blind. Um, but yeah, that was just really cute. So the whole 3D Cluedo board game thing, that was incredible. I want a 3D Cluedo board game thing. Um, and he's going about how they've added different rooms and different suspects and different weapons and it's just amazing. That's something I would do. Oh, and how he always calls Harry Hazza. He's like, Hazza? That's just that's adorable. And this is an after they've kissed and he's just sort of like freaking out and Noah's like um and they're just sort of hugging and just like looking after each other and just like and for a beautiful moment it was him and Harry again just then together and there wasn't anyone else and he didn't want them to be and it's just like they're just even just as friends they're just adorable and lovable and just everything you want and it's just amazing just made my little heart sing as I have said numerous times. Oh, and this bit also broke my heart where he's, um, it says he curled up on spud and cried as the room spun around and an aching dreadful to spotty. He stared into the darkness. This is what being a normal teenager was meant to be like, empty, frightened, alone. And that was just, like, a lot of it all just hit home to me and I just felt so bad for him and I just wanted to give him a hug and tell him everything's okay, you're fine, like, you don't have to be normal and just, mm. I just wanted to hug him and make everything better for him, but I couldn't because he's fictional. This was when he was um 
trying to figure out if he was gay or not because of the whole Harry debacle. I really loved um, this bit because um, it's very realistic and I'm just going to read that to you. And what about the really big questions? Did he feel the same? Was he gay? Being gay was not part of the plan. He dreamed of a normal existence. Everything in his own life hadn't been to date. He would marry a nice girl. Maybe Sophie, maybe we have a couple of kids one day. You can tell the idea of liking boys terrifies him because he just wants to be normal. And he's got his plan just to be normal, just to get through life and just be accepted. And then all of this chaos ensues and that's just not what he had in mind. But he can't help it, so it's just very realistic, I think, to how a lot of people think when they're going through that situation. It was just very relatable, again. And when, when at the very end, when Harry says, I know there's no one else in the world I enjoy spending time with as much as you. I know you get me like no one else gets me, and I know I definitely get you. And not being rude, I think that's probably a pretty rare thing. And I'm like, yes. No, it is so strange. He is so different to a lot of people, and... A lot of people don't get him and how over the top he is, and how dramatic he is, but how he just gets him and that bit just made me laugh, it made me cry, it made me feel all the emotions and I just... These, I think they're two of my favourite, um, it's one of my favourite couples I've ever read in YA, um, I think it's up there with Monty and Percy from The Gentleman's Guide, but they, these two are just adorable, as you can tell, they're just lovers, when done perfectly, I love. So the whole stepbrother thing with Eric, like... I mean, I, I kind of saw it coming just a little bit. And like I said, this whole plot was like a soap opera. It was so dramatic, it was so over the top and ridiculous, but it was funny and entertaining and I really liked it. Like, it fit perfectly and it worked really well, so you can't really complain about it that much because it was just amazing. And the whole, his dad um, hiding in the shed was hilarious. And, um, and when he, is climbing out the window at Sophie's house because he's scared the police are gonna like blame him for like nearly killing Jess or something and oh my god and then it's another bit when he's um around Jess's house and she's like starting to take clothes off because she's obviously trying to um have an excuse to say that he's gotten her pregnant and he's like mm, he's like no we should keep all the clothes on he doesn't want this happening he's just there like so awkward he doesn't just say no and leave he's just like caught up he's like nope Nope, and that was just so funny. I can imagine him just like trying to stop it from happening, but failing miserably. So that was just really entertaining for me. Oh, and then at the end when they actually got together, that was just the cutest little thing ever. Um, and when Noah asked Harry to be his boyfriend, that was just really cute. And then I've got this one highlight, this little sentence here, and it says, Harry says to Noah, your family's to screw up, it's a good job, you're pretty, and I'm like, Yes, I'm so happy that they're together and they're happy and it's just, mm, mm, my emotions. I love the ending to this book where it's just like everything's going well, everything's resolved and then his mum comes in and be like, oh me and your dad are back together, we're doing, we doing our marriage vows and he's just so like, of course, of course I couldn't have a moment of normality in my life, of course. Just chaos ensues and then Obviously that leads on to the second book, which I'm so excited to get. I have ordered it already. Um, I'm going to read it as soon as it arrives. So I'm just so excited to see more of Harry and Noah. More of this absolutely over-the-top chaos that I'm sure will follow after reading this book. Which is so lovable and realistic and relatable and funny. And I love this book so much. I feel like I haven't made any sense this video just because like, all my emotions have just been coming out at once. And I've been all over the place. And I'm sorry for that. But, here we are. I had to actually represent how I feel about this book and I feel like I have done that. I feel like I'm going to end this video here before I go on even more about this book and how incredible it is and how you should all read it. I mean, I guess if you've got this perfect book, you've already read it because it's the spoiler bit, but still. Make your friends read it, make your gran read it, make your mother read it, make your father read it, make your sister read it, make your brother read it, make your great great aunt read it. Make everyone read this book. I love it. So, yes. I hope you liked this video, if you did make sure you give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below and I'll see you guys next time.